Welcome to the Theo Video Report. My name is Don Kaufman. Here we are on December 15th, 2015, on the eve of really what's going to ultimately be hailed as the largest FOMC announcement in how many years? Okay, I mean, we're going back here a better part of a decade since they've raised interest rates. The expectations tomorrow is that they do raise interest rates. However, before I get into anything that's occurred in today's market with a rip roaring rally over here, got to throw that one out there. Before I get into any of that, recognize the uncertainty that is about to really kind of come into play inside the next 24 to 48 hours of trade that no matter what the FOMC announces, okay, it, it does not matter. Order flow at this point rules the marketplace and predictability to markets goes out the window as a glut of order flow kind of comes in. And that's something I like to tell you right off the bat, like, you know, uncertainty prevails in the current time that we're in. However, I err on the side of caution right now to the downside of the market. Now there's, you know, you look on the surface and you're like, well, 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 what makes you nervous over here, Dom? I'm going to show precisely what has kind of made me nervous uh, about markets today that even prior to the FOMC announcement, we may see some sell side activity. Let's, let's actually take you over to the charts here and take a look at some of the intraday trade inside of uh, the S&P futures. So as I get into it, I'm just going to completely clean up everything on a chart. I'm just going to go to like a one minute chart. All right. This is even in the pre-market. So the rally kind of began in the pre-market over here. And I'm not a market technician in any way, shape or form. I don't need to be to see that as a wild up move. But the markets did fade into the close and you can see they faded into the close and typically at the close you get some heavy volume this is fairly extreme sell side activity into the close where the s p's fell from you know 2038 all the way down to 2032 so six points however yesterday okay yesterday we saw 13 14 point move in one minute okay so the market it's just toying with us right now batting us around a little bit if you will so the markets fade into the close well off the highs of the day you can see the high of the day was all the way up at 2045 but that's neither here nor there okay what matters to me is where there was strength and where there happened to be weakness for that i'm going to go over here to market watch okay and there's advanced decline lines here's the advanced decline line on the nasdaq again neither here nor there what i want you guys to see is the advanced decline line in terms of sectors okay this this matters. So we ultimately had 10 sectors up. Energy is what drove the S&Ps higher today. So energy gets this big kind of relief bounce. Oil takes a sigh of relief, comes back up to the $37 a barrel handle. Energy has not been an area of strength. Okay. Next in the list over here, you can take a look at the financials. The financials, they fared very, very well today. They fared very well. However, you have to recognize the financials. I mean, that's what's taking center stage tomorrow during the FOMC announcement. So neither here nor there. The area of concern to me that led the entire S&P 500 year to date. So all of 2015, we've been led, okay, for the most part by technology. And more specifically, okay, forget about even looking like, oh, not all technology. No. The stocks that have led the marketplace, Facebook. Okay, so now we're going to look at just a quick intraday glance at Facebook over here. Stock ended down in the day. Apple did not lead markets this year. So I'm actually going to go to percentage view year to date. And I just want you guys to see this. You know, a big misnomer that Apple's actually performed well this year. Year to date, Apple's up 1%. Don't tell me it hasn't performed. It hasn't done anything. Okay, the S&Ps are... are Literally, tomorrow coming into the most, you know, the situation is at a head is what I'm getting to. But coming into the one most important FOMC announcements in, in the better part of a decade here, they could actually raise rates. I think it's totally overblown. The S&Ps are pretty much massively unchanged. I mean, you know, they're down seven tenths of a percent over here. Now, 
Facebook wasn't the reason I'm coming in here, okay, nor was Apple. Take a look at Netflix today, okay? Netflix, it did not have a good day. Now, granted, year to date, Netflix is still up a staggering amount. Nevertheless, respect that Netflix, Google, Amazon, none of these underlyings that have led markets, okay, year to date, have participated at all in today's rally. I mean, Amazon, a 73 cent move. Okay. What is it? You know, one tenth of 1%. It moved. <gasps> I think it moved. Uh, that was a la Seinfeld over there. But uh, again, you're not getting participation where you would have considered it. That pretty much makes this rally to me about as null and void as it gets. Now, if you want to look a little bit deeper, and I think you should, we're going to go over to the spiders momentarily, okay? Because there's something I want you guys to see in the spiders. So right now in the spiders, you got to open up the option chain. Whether you trade options or not, neither here nor there. And as I start to go deeper into these Theo video reports, we're going to go much deeper into the option side of thing. But I want you to look at the expected move. The expected move is pricing in still the rest of this week. You know, the rest of this week, well... Now we're here on what? Tuesday afternoon. All right. We got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They're still expecting, okay, a 47 point, 47 point SPX move. Now, why am I using the spiders? It's because it's an expiration week and it's, it's actually a uh, quarterly expiration. So it's what they call the quadruple witching. But the monthly expiration chops a day off the SPX because the SPX, the last day you can trade it is Thursday. It goes off the opening print on Friday morning. <sighs> Deep breath. Okay. It's okay. So what I do is I use the spiders. Use the spiders to kind of justify expected move throughout the entire week because the spiders expire Friday at the close. Actual expiration is the Saturday following the third Friday of the month, but we're looking at a $47 move, okay? You're like, uh-huh, okay, I get it. You talked about expected move yesterday. Hey, check this out. Let's actually go back and look at yesterday, okay? So yesterday, we were looking at a 53-point expected move. We just saw a 25-point move up in the S&Ps. 25-point move up in the S&Ps. Check it out. There's a 27 volatility. All I did now, I'm not looking at live data. I went to the Analyze tab on, on Thinkorswim, went to Think Back, and I'm looking at yesterday's date. I wanted to see the close yesterday. Compare the close yesterday. 27% volatility with a $53 expected move to today. 25% volatility with a $47 expected move. What am I saying? Like, what does this really mean? It means the market just rallied 25 S&P points. That's what happened, right? The rally, you know, 25 S&P futures points. But the volatility not only remained, it's quite sustained. It's still displaying a $47 expected move. So in this entire enormous up move, risk is still totally baked in. So a normal movement in the next, again, four days over here, normal movement is going to see, all right, almost a $50 move up or down. That's expected. And you'll actually see the option pricing, which the spiders are trading pretty much 205, the at the money puts trading, the at the money calls trading. You're going to see they're going to price in just that. They're going to price in almost, you know, a five point move in the spiders, which is equivalent to a 50 point move in the SPX. Great. Okay. But the options, what I'm saying, they're not decaying. The risk is still totally baked in when everybody thought like, oh, you know, I guess the market's just going to gonna rally to the upside over here. Everything's going to be warm and fuzzy. So we rally, you know, 25 points and yet still nothing, nothing. OK, last but not least over here, I want you to take a look at the XLF. OK, because the XLF, the risk premium in here is beyond elevated. So the risk premium in the XLF, the financials, has actually gotten totally jacked up now to almost 36%, okay? A full 10 points higher than the SPX volatility. So this is the sector that, again, today had this rip-roaring 2.3% rally. Not as good as, as what? The energy sector, pretty good, but a 2% rally in the XLF and volatility doesn't just remain high. Look, volatility's at 36%. Where was XLF volatility yesterday? Where were you yesterday, XLF? 41% volatility, nearly 
Okay, contracts. I mean, uh, just nothing nil in terms of a contraction in volatility with this enormous move to the upside. Okay, so risk premium staying over here. That's why I urge you to err on the side of caution in here in every way, shape, or form. Volume inside of the options in the XLF wasn't staggering. It was 70% of normal today in the spiders. Now I'm starting to dig a lot deeper into the options data in the spiders. Okay, they traded normal Okay, amounts. Again, the spiders, go to the spiders, bring them up in the trade tab over here, open up option statistics, and you're going to see they traded normal amounts. Okay, 100% of normal volume. Nothing extreme over here, but there's absolutely, okay, hedging activity going on, hence the heavier amounts of volatility. What I'll stress again is the stocks that have driven this marketplace higher the entire year failed to do so today and although they had a bit of a bounce yesterday again in a rally that looks so incredibly explosive driven by energy okay it looks and appears to me to kind of be a dead cat bounce play watch very carefully during the FOMC announcement the first move might not be the last move that simply means if we explode higher right off the FOMC announcement we could get crushed lower later in the day and vice versa there is no predictability to the order flow that is going to play out in here okay none whatsoever but I err to the side of caution maybe markets do sustain another explosive rally okay my feeling is here I think we got to go up to ultimately head back down with that thanks a lot everybody for joining us here at uh, the theo trade we uh we enjoy doing this on a day-to-day -day basis again my name is don Cox.